for a full stop, and then in one three left if that's available. Pablo Del Tango, India Bank, Palm Springs Tower, Squawk 6250. 6250. Pablo Del Tango, India Bank, Palm Springs Altimeters 29085, radar contact about uh, one zero miles west of the Palm Springs VOR. Presently landing uh, runway 31, so requesting straight up for 13. Uh, that's available. Ever uh, approach the Papa Del Tango India Bank, make straight in runway 13 left and clear to land. Wind is 0905. Clear to land runway 3 left, Papa Del Tango India Bank, thanks. Palm Springs Clearance, plus 4658 is type PC final slam clock, request clearance to Vegas S filed. Plus 4658, Palm Springs Clearance. Good afternoon, unable to give you S file, and I'll be forward to standby. Plus 4658 is clear to the Las Vegas airport. We have five Cathedral 1 departure procedure to Palm Springs, Victor 370, to 29 Palms, Victor 538, Cresso, join the Cresso free arrival. Maintain 7000, expect by level 2, 405 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 126.7, squawk 6316. Palm Springs, Victor 37029, Palm Victor 538, Presto, Presto 3, initially climb 7000, expect to use your FG5, departure on 67, squawk 6316, plus 465. Pause 4658, three back is correct. Tango D Mike, taxi to the ramp via Echo and Mandy frequency. Taxi to the ramp. Ontario Tower says the 237 Charlie Alpha are approximately three uh, four miles to the west inbound to land. Number 237 Charlie Alpha, Roger, inner left traffic, left downwind runway 26 left to Port Base. Enter left downwind 26 left to Port Base, uh, 237 Charlie Alpha. Charlie Tower, United. United 242 John Wayne Tower, runway 20 right, clear to land, wind 1703. Clear to land, 20 right, United 242. Palomar Tower, Gina, 220 Kilo, ILS 504. Near 520 Yankee Kilo, Palomar Tower, runway 24, clear to land, wind 210 at 11. Clear to land, Number 237 Charlie Alpha, runway 26 left, clear to land. 26 left, clear to land, 7 Charlie Alpha. Hot Springs Ramp Plus 4658 is trying to the weather going for taxi. Hot Springs 4658, uh, Palm Springs Ground, runway 31 right, taxi via Echo and Bravo. Trail right via Echo Bravo 4658. Riverside Tower, good morning, November 2903 Alpha with you on the island. Number 2903 Alpha, Riverside Tower, good afternoon. Runway 9 are clear, low approach, report to miss. November 2903 Alpha, the Lower road, runway 9, next day 46. Palm Springs Tower, plus 4658, ready to go to the right side, Brock. Anyone that's in the video area, Jerry? Plus 4658, Palm Springs Tower, runway 31, right, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, turn right, plus 4658. Palm Springs Tower, turn right, plus 4658. Here's our Yankee Kilo, Rush Taxi, into the ramp via Alpha. Via Alpha. Plus 4658, contact 7 departure. Contact departure 465. Says the 7 Charlie Alpha is clearly active. Taxi to the GA parking place. We're 7 Charlie Alpha. Main on this frequency taxi into the South Ram via Sierra. South Ram via Sierra with you, 7 Charlie Alpha, thanks. Number 03 Alpha, going around. Alpha, confirm going around or going missed? No, number 03 Alpha, going missing. Number 03 Alpha, Roger, execute the published missed approach procedure. Hyper 2903 Alpha, contact SoCal departure. Contact departure, 03 Alpha. Number 03 Alpha, departure frequency will be 135 wind. 135.4 for departure, number 2903 Alpha. Ontario Tower, November 516 Delta Mike, inbound ILS 26 left. Number 516 Delta Mike, Ontario Tower. Good afternoon, Ontario. Uh, wind is calm. Runway 26 left, clear land. 26 left, clear land, 6 Delta Mike. Tower, number 36. Correction, 516 Delta Mike, clear the active at uniform, taxiing to the south apron. Number 6 Delta Mike, Roger, taxiing on the south ramp via Sierra, remain on this frequency. Via Sierra on this frequency, 6 Delta Mike. Number 
Number 2903 Alpha Riverside Ground in the future. Don't switch to the ground uh, frequency unless you're told to do so. You should stay with tower, exiting the runway all the way to the whole short point. Stay on this frequency for now. Taxi to the Ram Via Alpha. Taxi to the Ram Via Alpha. Welcome. Jolene Clarence. November 6th. Charity 76, Charlie, Mike, Jolly, Clarence, good evening, good luck on the I-4 destination. We'll be also in our Kilo Oscar X-Ray Romeo. That's Kilo Oscar X-Ray Romeo. 6 to Mike. Yes, sir, good luck. Uh, I'm going to sign off uh, and uh, collect some information for this destination. I'll sign back in. Is that okay? Absolutely. Just re, uh, report when you're back with the I-4, and uh, how long do you think it'll be? It's not going to be more than an hour, is it? No, no. I'll have to, I have to file and uh, get some uh, charts and plates. Wonderful. Yeah, I'll still be here, so it shouldn't be a problem, and uh, we'll look for your uh, flight plan to come through. Last Vegas Star, Plus 4658, uh, Joe, one on the right, 4500. Plus 4658, Las Vegas Tower, runway 1, and a right, we're land, wind 1807. Clear to land, it's one ride, four, six, five, eight. Five, six, five, eight, exit right, taxi into the ramp via hotel, remain on this frequency today. Exit right, ramp via hotel, ramp frequency, update, four, six, five, eight. On reach ground, uh, number 95 for whiskey alpha is, uh, hyper, uh, Comanche, uh, PH, or slash, whiskey alpha. Uh, like, uh, taxi the active, uh, VFR, east departure with the weather. Calling along beach ground, need you just to verify your, uh, call sign, please. Uh, sorry about that. 916 Whiskey Alpha, November 916 Whiskey Alpha. Comanche 9016 Whiskey Alpha, Long Beach, uh, Long Beach Ground, Roger. And just come from VFR eastbound. Eastbound and from the east ramp just south of uh, runway 25. Comanche 9016 Whiskey Alpha, Roger, runway 26 right, taxi via Kilo. Okay, 25 right uh, via Kilo, uh, 916 Whiskey Alpha. Long Beach Tower, November 916 Whiskey Alpha, holding short of 25 right via Kilo, ready for departure via Park. We're at 916 Whiskey off Long Beach Tower, runway 25 right, clear for takeoff, right down with departure, please. Clear for takeoff 25 right, right down with departure, uh, 6 Whiskey off. Good day, Palm Springs, Ground Scanning, Hotel Tango, East Ramp, India, Close Traffic, runway 31 right. Top of Hotel Tango, do you mind? Palm Springs, uh, Ground Say, again, Air Traffic? Bray, Cessna Scan. Scaling Tango, do you mind? Thank you, runway 31 right, taxi via Echo and Bravo. Echo and Bravo. We're center 791 Juliet, Torrance Ground left. Okay, Scott 791 Juliet, uh, we see there's no like, clearance delivery with the speed, so would we get our uh, departure instructions with tower or with ground? Always go with the lowest, so we'll start with ground, just uh, say your intentions. Okay, Scott 791 Juliet, uh, type. There's no 172 on the uh, uh, south, mm -hmm. uh, south angles uh, with the numbers requesting uh, VFR advisories to uh, the number 791 Juliet, Roger, departure frequency 134.9, squawk 2061. 1349, squawk 791 Juliet. Got 91 Juliet, read back, is correct, are you ready to taxi now? Uh, in a couple of minutes, just gotta go. Sky 701 Juliet, Roger. Runway 2, men are right. Text via Hotel. Correction, text via Alpha and Juliet. 2, men right, taxi via Alpha. Happy Sunday, guys. Good to see you all. Miniweb, hello. Anna Sparks, good to see you as well today on the stream. Evanek, as always, good to see you. And the Sky Lounge and Val Dudes and John Fly and Reptor, Rep. Style Rick, thanks for the auto host, much uh, appreciated. Scotty, good to see you as well. And Sniper, hello. So guys, um, I'm 
reminded by Sniper here jumping in. DV, good to see you as well. Um, because I've added some additional sound commands for subscribers only here in chat. If you look at the uh, information panels or panes in uh, on my Twitch channel page, you can see I've added uh, an additional bunch that I think are not only funny, but also perhaps has have a little bit more of a value for you guys to remind me of stuff that I'm doing wrong or doing good while uh, flying. So feel free to use those. Eitke, good to see you as well. Crash Tender, good to see you too. Guys, it's getting cozy here. Good to see you. Evanek, no Discord chat today, working on the f on finishing touches on my graduation thesis. I can imagine. Good luck with that, Evanek. Good luck. So Evanek is going to graduate tomorrow, so he needs to do some work there. Totally understand. Um, so, guys, um, Sunday flying. I've got plenty of time to do some flying, and um, I've been I've almost completed the King Schools video training course on the uh, GNS 530, which I really enjoyed in the last stream. Um, not that complex, actually. Um, the, the the last half of the uh, video training course was mostly about uh, putting in instrument procedures, which is essentially just hitting a button and loading it up. Um, uh, still, it needs some uh, needs some practice, though. Uh, but I'm actually quite getting at least intellectually more comfortable with using uh, the GNS uh, with all the buttons and knobs. And I also I woke up this morning with the idea to perhaps tinker a little bit with my radio panel. I, as you guys know, I'm using the SciTech panels that are, that are actually out of production. Uh, hopefully Logitech, which has taken over, uh, SciTech will produce some even more awesome uh, and more reliable uh, devices. Anyway, I've got the radio panel um, and I thought, hey, those turning knobs also has an inner and an outer knob. Um, perhaps I can use Spotnex to program those knobs. Um, to use with the GNS because it's the fiddling around with the mouse cursor you know you guys have probably seen in the previous stream it takes some time and it's just a little bit frustrating to um, to turn that knob by changing letters and stuff um, and so I thought if I could just switch my radio panel uh, I've got different modes there to for example what I have what I don't use ADF I don't use DME I don't use there's also a transponder um, feature on the radio panel that I don't use, I could assign that function to the GNS. But I don't know if there's a data ref or some kind of, I, I imagine that there would be, uh, I can expect that there would be um, um, a feature there. So I can just use uh, the radio panel to, um, to, to, to put in uh, waypoints and stuff, which I think might be quite interesting. So if you guys have any experience with that, let me know. The little flight service bot is working. That's good to see. Nice. And thanks for the follow. Is that matter? Thank you and happy Sunday. So uh, that's a nice idea. So I need to um, uh, work with that uh, a bit. I don't know why it shouldn't work, but um, that's uh, on my mind. Anyways, um, I, I'm going to alternate between IFR flights and VFR flights because it, those are not really two separate worlds. I'm noticing that if I just stay in, in touch with VFR flying and also keep flying VFR, that it also benefits my flying in IFR. And um, and uh, I just I, I just still so much like to fly VFR, as you guys know. Um, so that's why today I'm going to do that as well. But always in spirit of learning something new or optimizing my flight performance. And as you know, I have such a hard time flying pilot edge, not pilot edge, but pilot edge. Pilot, I don't know what the really difference is in pronunciation there, but just flying on visual. So no radio navigation, but just using the chart um, and um, find my way around and using the clock. Uh, so this is also a, a very good opportunity for you guys to uh, remind me of the clock by using those sound commands. Um, I have assigned myself kind of like a tour around the Bakersfield area. We start here at El Dilce, where we currently are, which is a very, very nice airport. And we're gonna go up north um, and find ourselves, hopefully find a way to get to Tehachepi. Uh, which I only visited as part of the CAT ratings a very long time ago, uh, but only using visual reference points. So I'm actually going to switch off or, well, um, uh, turn to a page on the GNS so I cannot see uh, where we are uh, in reference to the map. And we'll just use highways, uh, landmarks, uh, rivers, lakes, uh, airports to get to our uh, airport. And we're going to do that several times. So first to Tehachepi. 
It's just a wonderful scenery. The photo real scenery here is so gorgeous. So it's going to be quite a scenic flight. Um, and then I'm going to fly to Poso Kern. A very small, cute CTAF non towered airport. Um, I initially thought, let's go to Bakersfield, Lima 45 here, but it seems a little bit obvious to get there. Although for me, sometimes it might seem obvious and I still have a hard time uh, getting to that airport because we could use that highway here and go all the way down here to the west and get to Bakersfield. So, so, so I thought, well, let's just go to Pozo there um, instead. That might perhaps be a little bit more challenging. I don't know. Um, and then go to Lost Hills. And then we go to Taft, um, which might be nice. So again, scenic VFR flying only using pilotage. And... Um, we're just going to have some fun. Sunday flying. Mountain Valley is really nice too. Yeah, I know, I know. Flew there once on the Cat 5. Yeah, it, indeed. It was the Cat 5, have Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was nice as well. So, um, let's focus on that first leg. Uh, because this is obviously not the, the, the track that we're going to fly. It's not going to be a direct to um, Teha Chepi. So, let's see how we can do this. Uh, didn't have any time to prepare this flight and I think it's also interesting to again do this out loud with each other here on the stream. So, Ako Dolce. So I thought, looking at this uh, view, we've got a highway right here south going northeast. And there's a lot of terrain here. Uh, also, looking at weather, the bad weather is, as usual, typically on the south here, so over LA, um, the LA area. So I'd like to stay up north also uh, weather-wise. So um, what we could do is perhaps the winds, I mean, we're going to check in with the METAR soon. Let me see if I can also pull that up here on four flights. No, it's not reporting METARs. Okay, Palmdale is seven knots at 200. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, depart, most likely want to look at the windsock here soon, uh, runway 22, and that means RP, you can see, so it's a right pattern, that's okay, so a right pattern, a right downwind, or even a right base departure, because I like to um, get uh, to this highway, and I use it as a guideline to go all the way up to the north, so we circumvent all of that terrain, and then follow the terrain core here, well, the north side here of these mountains, stay outside of the uh, uh, Delta uh, airspace, um, Delta class airports here, um, use the river perhaps, there are some rivers here, but again, I don't have uh, that much of a good experience with using lakes or rivers, uh, but also lakes uh, on a sectional for referencing, uh, because sometimes those lakes are just not part of the photoreal, or they're dried up. Um, so I don't think that those are that r that that's useful to uh, to work with. We we'll see some power lines here that I should also make use of, which we could, I guess, in a way. Um, but the idea is, if I look at Tehachepi, we've got some Isabella Moa there on top. Minimaps, Tim, I might join you on this one, but I will be going Nordo. Everyone in my house is sleeping. Make sure they're the last one. Oh, Roger that. Well, you're more than welcome, uh, Minimaps, sure. Or you just join behind me, whatever you like. Uh, everyone is uh, is invited to join in if you have a pilot uh, pilot at your account. Um, but if you look at the, um, at the uh, airspace here, there's an Isabella Moa, which was also the main challenge, I guess, of the Cat 5 rating here, that is on top of these two non-towered airports. And as you can see here, MOA excludes airspace 1,500 feet AGL and below, specifically for these rings, as you can see, surrounding these non-towered airports, including the Hachepi. Uh, but outside of that, um, that MOA goes all the way from 200 feet, I believe. Let me see. Can I pull that up? Isabella Mel, yeah, from 200 feet AGL up to 18,000. So airspace is a big uh, concern here for our flight. And as you can see, uh, these two uh, airports, or these airspaces, as you, as you can see, that are uh, excluding the, the MOA, um, touch here the border of the Isabella, uh, Isabella MOA. So that means that we need to enter from this direction, right? So that's why, in terms of flight, um, and you can see there's also terrain here down south. Uh, I'd like to come in from this side. So again, this is why this particular leg is so useful in terms of practicing um, 
uh, visual uh, navigation because we need to make some turns and find our way, uh, fly all the way around to get to Tehachapi, which is really, really nice. So uh, I think we need to go this direction and then go to the right here and then up and then to Tehachapi. This is the idea. And as you can see, a lot of airspace, a lot of MTRs. Look at that. So military air, uh, air traffic flying, uh, flying here. Uh, we can also you can also see that we are crossing this corridor, MTR corridor, this grayish airspace. Um, so I guess in the real world um, we would need to fly on flight following. So we're sh sure that the approach controllers have a look. Um, uh, with us to see if there's not any military air traffic on our way um, while we are crossing this particular area. Uh, but currently, uh, pilot, uh, the pilot controller are not live. A few hours or so but to, uh, until pilot goes live. Uh, but that AI traffic is generated currently on the network. So we need to be extra, extra vigilant to, um, to look for traffic there and not fly into uh, high-speed uh, F-16s or F-18s or whatever it may be. Media apps, absolutely loving my new GPB 500 scenery. Oh man, yeah, isn't it? I was looking at um, the stream of John Fly yesterday where he was showcasing the new French Valley um, of, uh, of Greg's, uh, which was again, wonderful. So I was actually also considering flying at French Valley today, but the weather there, there is currently not that good. And I'm also, I'm also loving the Bakersfield um, area here. Hoping that Greg also sent him an email if he could do uh, Lima 45 here. Um, of the airport, um, of the Bakersfield area, because that's also a very nice non-towered airport, but hey, he is very, very busy. Um, so, yeah, um, so up north, I'm going to follow this highway, then go stick to the north side here, so the, the edge here uh, of that uh, mountainous terrain. Thanks for the follow, Tessos. Thank you. And uh, we are going to fly along that river i guess um you can also see there are lots of roads but nothing that is that clear i think it's more reliable to just fly north and and stay to the right side of that mountain ter mountainous terrain i believe but i'd like to fly towards them so let me first put this into this flight so we're going to go to the right first mark is that highway then follow that highway to uh, Palmdale Lake. I don't expect to see that lake, but hey. So um, we uh, um, fly away from uh, from from all of those mountain tops. Then we're going to make that left turn and go all the way down this direction. However, I'd like to have some. I mean, we're going to see uh, Palmdale, obviously. That's also a big visual reference point that we know they were on the right side. Uh, we also see General Fox uh, while we keep the, the mountaintops to the left. Again, no radio navigation. I'd like to fly at least, or like to see, Quail Lake. So that's something that we can do. Then if we see Quail Lake, and again I'm going to use the clock, so I should also prepare for times, especially for this flight. So Snipe, I need your assistance here. Um, let me see. So from Quill Lake, we might shoot a plane heading because I don't see anything we can follow. Oh no, we could. We could use Highway 5 here to the left, as you can see. Let's go. That goes up north. A little bit... Well, there's also terrain here. 7,000 feet. So perhaps that might be necessary. Okay, so we're going to pick up Highway 5. We have all the time in the world. We're going to fly into the Bakersfield area. And then we're going to make that right turn, keeping the mountains and stuff to the right of us. Right? Yes, right. Um, and then we're going to fly that way. But then we need to be specific here with how we're going to enter the Tehachapi excluded airspace. Still echo though, but um, we need to be careful here. And as you can see, there's some kind of a valley that we can fly through. There are some roads there that go to Tehachapi. Um, so I'd like to pick up on those. So we might fly here. We're going to see some power lines. You can see. Um, but I'd like to fly through here. 
So that's going to be interesting, guys. We need to really look outside of the window there to find uh, those power lines and also that road that will guide us all the way up um, to Teha Chepi. We might see two airports. We need to s sign into that frequency. It's right pattern 11. Um, yeah, what runway are we going to? Do we have a guitar here? Yeah, we do have five knots, so it's Windscom 280. Yeah, so it's uh, generally all coming from the 220 kind of uh, direction. So that might favor runway 29. 29 is left pattern, so that's great. So that means that we can enter the um, the left downwind for runway 29. I believe Tai Chep is also a nice airport here, uh, scenery-wise. Uh, not Greg's, but uh, I think it, it is a cute airport, but I don't know for sure. Um, okay, so uh, that's our first leg. I think this is going to be really, really scenic. Really looking forward to this flight, and I think this is nice. Again, I, I also actually need to study, perhaps you guys know, some, some again, remind myself of some of the principles that are um, involved with, with flying on visuals. Um, so, for example, you can use points, but it's better to use guiding lines. So, for example, using flying towards a highway that brings you, guides you to your next point is much better and safer, more reliable than just fixing on points that you'd like to spot somewhere. Um, and there are many other kinds of strategies almost that you can use. And I've been Googling um, just before the stream, but I couldn't find any good list. So, uh, if you guys have any principles that I can learn and adopt as part of my Pilotage, pilotage routines. Let me know uh, because I think that's um, uh, because I think it's uh, really, really important. Sniper, do we have some times for these legs? <laughs> oh yeah, we do. We do. We do. We do. We do. Um, so what we could do is obviously four flight is giving us some times based on a, a 100 knot ground speed. Um, Navlog, as you can see here, 2 minutes and 37 seconds we would need from Equadolce to that um, highway. You can see it's in purple, that's our lag that's currently activated. Or active. Um, but I, well, again, I think it's important to do. USC, thanks for the subscription, man. Happy Sunday. Thank you. That's really encouraging, guys. Thanks. So now you also have access to the sound commands. Um, keep them coming. Um, so that's two minutes. I guess we're in a climb, so we're not that fast, or perhaps even already in a minute. And again, um, this is the time needed to fly from one point to the next, right? So it would take us that much time to exactly get to that point. That, that means that we might already see. That's the cheer. Thank you, guys. It's the cheer. <laughs> Um, that we might already be able to spot the highway in, in a minute or so, because obviously we were looking outside and we can look into the distance, right? So um, uh, I guess we can also use times, time uh, durations that um, we need to be able to spot that particular visual mark rather than overflying it, right? Um, Anyways, about a minute or so, I would say, uh, we would be able um, to see that highway. Also, it's important, there's also a strategy of flying on visuals, is flying high up. So you have an overview of the landscape. If you're flying really low to the terrain, it's quite hard, obviously, to spot any visuals or landmarks, visual reference points in the distance. Uh, now, you can see terrain is a concern here, around 5,000 feet tops. Um, so uh, I, I guess we need to uh, fly at least um, 6,000 uh, feet MSL here, and we can fly generally 50, 1,500 perhaps. Now that's also quite low to the ground. Um, 3,000 feet AGL. Um, so uh, perhaps density altitude also becomes an issue here because we're flying quite high up MSL-wise, um, and we only fly our rusty Skyhawk here. So uh, that's also something that we need to be uh, aware of. Um, anyways, high up, um, and as you can see, each leg is it's particularly the third leg from uh, that Lake Palmdale all the way up to the uh, to the west here to Quail Lake. That's gonna uh, take some time, uh, namely 21 minutes. Yeah. So for this particular flight, and again, guys, use the reminders to remind me of setting the clock for each individual leg. So I need to reset the clock, and again, time. Uh, I, I'm not going to fly with the GPS today, just visuals, just plain old 
Slender Elf Farm, old school flying, which I really, really like. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So let's get this party going. <laughs> Wonderful Aqua Dolce. Nice red hangers. So um, oh, we do have some winds. Seem to be more than five knots actually. Each each section of this windsock is about three knots, I believe. So this is three, three, six. So it's kind of like six knots of a wind coming, and it would not favor runway two two. It would runway runway two two. I make I made a mistake before. Yeah, because the wind is is going into the windsock, so it's coming from that direction, and so that means that we need to fly towards that direction to get that headwind uh, headwind going. As you can see, there's all the marginal VMC stuff to the south that we're not going to fly towards. We're going to fly that direction, and the highway that I'm going to try to track uh, from our departure here from Aqua Delce uh, will be just over this particular hill. It's not it's not that road, but it's somewhere around beyond beyond that uh, that hill. So hoping that we can spot that in time. Okay, nice. Ah, Sunday flying, guys. Been looking forward to this. Um, now let's get going then. Uh, first, let's uh, fasten our seat belts. Fastened. Pilot is already live, so that's good. Uh, Colon dart check. Parking brakes are set. Uh, live fast fire extinguisher. Door is closed. ELT is set to auto. Uh, in in. Flap lever is up and our flaps are up. My mixture is working. Throttle is working. Trim is set and working. Fuel tank set to both. Uh, cutoff is in. Alternate is in. Circuit breakers are nicely tucked in. And my switch panel is working. Why is my beacon light off? Um, not that it's working right now, but it's just to, uh, it's good, it's good habit to just keep it in the on position. And importantly, my avionics are off. Good. Uh, then I'm going to check my controls to the right. That one goes down. That one goes up. Down. And that one goes up. Trim is working too. My pedals are working too. Wonderful. Batteries on. Well, we got uh, enough fuel. We can refuel perhaps. Uh, if I, I'm going to do it by the book, I should also look at the airports to see if actually fuel is provided. Now, what's the rule? I think there should be a star or a or a crosshair on top of the uh, sectional here. So Quill Lake, obviously, is a private airport here. Would not have, not provide fuel, refueling capabilities. Uh, but as you can see here, Tehachepi would have. I, be I believe the star has to do with... Guys, what does it mean? What does the star mean? I, b I believe the crosshair means that there are um, fuel um, station options there. I don't know for sure. Um, Norbert, good to see you as well. Welcome on board. Uh, but again, in terms of fueling, we need to make sure that the, f the that the flight that we're making, that our destination airport has refueling options, uh, but perhaps also some uh, alternate airports if we need to divert uh, that we can refuel. Um, okay, so um, we do have for this particular leg um, avionics on, off, and that is on. That's good. Let's check what the flaps are doing again. I'm skipping the external walk around, even though that is part of the wrap, just to save some time. It's getting a little bit redundant to do those checks. Um, on, on, on. We're going to check that soon. Um, Good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Uh, avionics off. Throttle a bit in. And let's prime. Fuel pump on. One, two, three. I can see some fuel flow there. That's good. Fuel pump off. Parking brakes again. Are set. Fuel tank set to both. Is anyone walking around? Nope. So clear prop. Make sure full in. That's set to 1200 here. Thanks for the follow. You mesh. Thank you. Welcome on board. 1200. Generator or alternator is now on. And I can see a rise in the M meter. That's good. Let's lean for ground. Look at that peak RPM. There it is. Yeah, so a little bit in. Good. And then reset to 1000. So it's better. You can more easily see that 
peak when you're at 1200 RPM rather than at 1000, so that's why. Uh, that's on, good, and oil pressure was already in the green, yeah, perfect. Avionics on, that's it, let's go mode C, why not? There we are, 1200 VFR, and now we can switch off actually the garments. Cannot totally switch them off because they are connected to my comm radio, so I'm just gonna switch it to a page that doesn't show uh, the map. And again, uh, I have not found the time yet to uh, look into the CDI issue that we found in the previous stream. Um, this needle was not really corresponding, or actually the entire instrument was not connected, as though it seemed, to my GPS uh, flight plan and track. Um, so I need to fiddle around with the settings to uh, make sure that it, uh, that it actually does work. I cannot believe that uh, it wouldn't work, actually. Um, 